Hey, it's uh, Ray from LoveYourRV.com again, and today I have uh, something for you that's not RV related at all. It's uh, more to do with my camera equipment. Uh, I seem to get a lot of comments and emails lately asking me, you know, what do I use to take the still photos in my videos and, and what I use to uh, make the videos, what kind of camera I'm using in the software. So I thought I'd uh, give you a little look at what I, what I use. This is a Sony NEX5R. It's a couple years old now and uh, it's what they call a mirrorless camera. So basically there's DSLR cameras that have a, a mirrored shutter in them. Well a new, uh, new revolution in cameras is these mirrorless ones. So it basically has a, a sensor the size of a DSLR but in a small compact package like this. Also, it has, like a DSLR, it has removable lenses, so you can uh, swap out lenses. This is the one that came with it. It's a, what they call 18 to 55, and I do most of my shooting with that. Although I can borrow my wife, of course, the photographer. She has a whack of different lenses, so sometimes if I need a telephoto or a wide angle, I'll borrow one of hers for that. But uh, a few of the features I really like, nice case design really good really feels good in your hand and I like the way they've shaped that it just fits my hand perfect I can carry it around with one hand also on the back here is the the LCD screen and it's got a really cool feature it flips up like that so I can go right down on the ground and uh, take shots and still see what I'm shooting or it flips the other way so I can go lift my arms straight in the air and still get a high angle shot but still see what I'm shooting so I really like that uh, feature there the floating screen also it has a pretty quick startup time which is nice when you're out shooting for the camera to come on quick in case you see something and uh, what else do I like very good in low light I've noticed I have this Sony camera and I'll show you in a minute my Sony camcorder and both of them I guess the way they design the sensors they're both really good in low light which is nice for us because we're out hiking a lot for sunset shots and stuff like that so a lot of the footage I get is um, after sunset in the dusk. Um, the other thing it's been very very durable I guess we got uh, I got about almost two years on this camera now and I don't baby my cameras. It's it's flopping around on my chest. You know, I'll throw it in a bag, throw it in the truck. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty hard on it and it it hasn't hasn't failed me whatsoever, so it's a nice durable camera. And uh, what do I not like about it? There are a few things. It takes video, but the video is pretty shaky. It doesn't have very good stabilization at all. If it had good stabilization, I may actually use it more for, for videos. I may even get rid of my little camcorder. And also the sound on it is crappy. It's got a couple tiny little mics up here. And it just has horrible sound. So as far as a, it can do video, but uh, it definitely is not my, my preferred. I'm still going to hang on to my camcorder, which I'll show you next. Okay, here's my trusty little camcorder. It fits nicely in my hand. It's a, a CX, no, HDR CX190, and I've had this pretty close to three years now, and it's had some heavy use, you know. I've dropped it a bunch of times. You know where I, I go out in the desert down there, so it's had lots of dust, been rained on, still performing fine. I love this little camcorder. And it wasn't that expensive. I think maybe it was about three hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred dollars when I got it. A um, couple features I really like. Uh, one feature that it has that's kind of cool. Of course, all camcorders do this now, but it's it's super handy as far as that goes. But uh, this is the killer feature for me compared to other camcorders is this little hidden USB. So when I want to transfer it to my computer, rather than pulling out a whack of cords and hooking things up, I can just plug that into my computer and download the video right away. And it just pops back in there. So yeah, I love that feature. 
The other thing was the zoom. This thing does a 30 times zoom, and if you've seen some of my videos, it's amazing how far you can zoom with this 30 times optical zoom. That was a great, great feature. Also, it has very good image stabilization. Like, I'm pretty jerky with it, and I can even be walking, and it's still not, not really, really jerky like my other camera. The still camera is just ridiculous, but this one really has good stabilization, especially when you're not zoomed out. When you're zoomed out, it's a little bad, but when you're not zoomed out, it's really good stabilization. And also, it um, has good sound. There's a couple mics down here, built-in mics. And there they pick up sound really well like most of my narration comes out pretty clear it also picks up you know birds and all kinds of sounds around the only thing i don't like is maybe the wind noise and also this thing has no external mic port so i may have to upgrade that in the future but basically good sound good zoom and i like that that thing there so it's just a budget camcorder um, you know, for YouTube videos, you really don't need much. The resolution on the, you could buy really super fancy equipment and it won't make much difference once you upload it to YouTube and people are watching it on their phones. So I like this little sucker. It's nice and compact. It'll fit in my coat pocket or if I have a pair of cargo pants, I can throw it in there, take it with me wherever I go. A um, couple features I don't like is the zoom button on top here. It's really hard to control and you hit it and it starts out slow and gets faster and faster it's really difficult to maintain and uh, well, that's about it though every other feature I really like it's been a good little camcorder I highly recommend it if you're looking to just do some some videos to upload to YouTube um, they don't have this particular model anymore you know but there's an upgraded one they also uh, what do they use for a card just uses a standard little SD card like that you plug in I get like a 32 gig and I never I've never really run out I just do short clips so but I've never even come close to using all the memory I think I can do an hour and a half easy in there so uh, I'm doing up a write-up on that I'll link it in the the video here and uh, you can go check it out on the blog if you're interested so there you go that's the two uh, pieces of camera gear I use to make my videos. Um, I also use a bunch of different software so if I'll uh, continue the video on with some screenshots of the software I use. I use a combination of some free software and a couple paid paid pieces of software as well. Okay so uh, we're on the computer now and uh, I've got open my main video processing software it's called Corel Video Studio X8, and uh, it has SCADs a feature, as I don't use 5% of all the features on it. But the main reason I went with this one is it supported my 64-bit uh, processor, and uh, it just ran smooth because of that. I tried various other programs, some free ones, some paid ones, and most of them were jerky or they would crash, but this one's been just smooth and never crashes, easy to use. It's got the you know usual interface you get with video editors. Um, so it also mates well with uh, the main photo editing software I used, which is Paint Shop Pro by Corel X7. And if I have to do any detailed work or anything like that, this is this is the one I'll use. Um, has uh, lots of adjustments on it, or if I if I want to go in and and totally the picture, do layers, stuff like that. It's uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's a really decent program. A little slow right now because I have so many things open to show you. Um, so those are the two paid ones. The video, I think the video software went for around 80 to 100 dollars and this one was like 50 or 60. But, uh, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. Um, for the videos, um, usually once I bring them out of the video studio, um, I usually use a 1280 by 720 resolution and, uh, a lot of times for, say, a 15-minute video, that can mean a gigabyte um, video gets pumped out. I usually save them in MP4 
He seems to be YouTube likes that format a lot. And usually I want to convert them down a bit because uh, the file size is so big and when I'm on a paid cell data connection that can mean 10 bucks just to upload the video. So um, I use a program called Amersoft Video Converter and uh, what what I do with that is I, I feed in say my file. See this one's 860 megabytes. It'll still maintain the same solution, but it's dropping the file size down to uh, 199. So it, it may uh, hurt as far as motion, like guys who put gaming videos up, they wouldn't like that. But most of my videos are pretty static, so works it well for me. Saves me a bit of bandwidth and money on the uploads. Um, as far as free programs go, um, for managing all my, my photos, I just use the the Windows uh, Photo Gallery. I use Windows 7 um, on a just in the cheap Toshiba laptop. Um, I don't have the money to buy, say, a MacBook or something like that. But my laptop's 17 inches, so it's nice and big for me. I'm starting to get old eyes. I need a big screen. And uh, this gallery, you know, it I can it sorts all my video, my I mean my photos and I can add captions, descriptive tags, all that kind of stuff. It'll also do some, you know, quick edits. If I need to edit a photo, I can quickly do that. Um, but it's free. It's included in Windows and runs well on Windows. So it's a, a good program. If I need to do something quick and organizes my photos, fine. Um, if I want to really do something quick, I use this program called, it's called Earth and View. And uh, it's just a really fast photo editor, and a lot of times I'll use it to crop photos. I'll just pick one here. You know, if I need to do a quick crop as a draw like that, you can quickly crop or crop your photo. Um, So stuff like that. Also, it has a really uh, good uh, feature. It's got batch conversion, batch conversion and rename, and that's that's a really powerful thing for a free piece of software. It works really well. So I use it mainly for those two purposes. It's also my main video my photo viewer because it's so fast. It just pops up instantly. You know, you get some of these big, big uh, things. It's photo software that do all kinds of things. You click on a photo and it takes you know two minutes for the thing to open. Whereas this Earth and View just pops right up, and uh, it's free, free for a download. Uh, final piece is an online thing called Pic Pixlr Express, and I really like that. I can make uh, collages with it, um, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's uh, a neat piece of software, and it's free and it works online. So uh, I like using that for if I have to quickly get something, you know, get a picture and I want to add text to it. You can quickly add text to the photo. It's got all kinds of adjustments in there. You can crop and resize it, and it's all just works on the web. So that's another free one. You just have to go to the website address, pixlr.com slash express. And uh, there you go. So there you go. There's a a little look at uh, the software I use and uh, the two cameras I use. So hopefully people have um, been asking me and uh, hopefully this is uh, giving you some uh, information to go by. Any other questions, just uh, leave them in the comments or contact me. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot and uh, happy RVing.